the world. A vast and wonderful place. And it's all powered by plants. Plants grow. Then they are eaten by animals, which are eaten by humans. But where do plants get their energy? To find out, we need to enter the exciting world of exotons. Everything starts with the sun. It allows us to see colors, but more importantly, it gives energy to the plants through a process called photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, a plant absorbs photons from the sun and uses them to grow. Photons are tiny particles of light, and to see what's going on when they're absorbed, we need to take a closer look. Here, at the centimeter level, we can start seeing some of the intricacies of the plant. But to really understand what's happening, we need to go down to the level of the cell. Oh, not that kind of cell. The cells of the plant. Each plant cell is only a few micrometers wide. Each micrometer is only one ten thousandth of a centimeter. These cells are responsible for turning light into energy. But how do they do that? To find out, we need to go down one more level. There we go. Now we are at the nanometer level, or one thousandth of a micrometer. Now we can see individual atoms and molecules. At this very small scale, photosynthesis is performed by molecules called chlorophyll. These molecules have nitrogen atoms connected to a magnesium atom at the center, and there are over hundreds of thousands of these within the leaves of all plants. Oh right, thank you. The sun shines on the leaf in the form of photons, discrete packages of light energy. Meanwhile, low energy Phil is relaxing until a photon collides with him, giving him its energy. The electrons making up Phil's bonds get excited, creating a higher energy Phil. This happens in femtoseconds, one billion millionth of a second. This excitation of a molecule is called an exciton. Phil can then pass the excitation to the neighboring molecules, and in this way, the exciton moves through the cell. Eventually, it reaches the reaction center, where it is turned into chemical energy. Plants use this chemical energy to grow. In Boston, Massachusetts, researchers at MIT and Harvard formed the Center for Excitonics to study this phenomenon. We use lasers to study how excitons move in new and unique materials. and use these materials to make better devices, such as solar cells. We want to make excitons travel faster and further. Excitons are everywhere. Whenever light interacts with plants, excitons are created. Maybe one day, materials from the Center for Exotonics will be used to make your electricity or light your home. Now, are you excited about exotons?